Are you sure? My sincerest thanks. Hey, dreamers. We are up and ready to party. Lavos. Lavos. The transmuter. Called by some, anachronistically, the alchemist. Transmutation, you say? A superstitious process from long ago in which deranged old men heated stinking substances over fires of dung, thinking they could make gold? No. To the Orokin, it was a darkly potent, forbidden science. They were not squeamish, nor moral. So what profound taboos must this art have violated? No transmuter was more dreaded than Yavi, the crawling serpent, the abhorred, the filth speaker. The Orokin feared him so greatly that they whispered he might, somehow, survive even the Jade Light, just as a severed snake was once believed to grow a new head. So instead, he was imprisoned that his evil might be contained, if not quenched. His jailer was a brute of a warframe named Lavos. The prison of Dabeoth Kra no longer stands. Both it and the slumped Venusian mountain peak upon which it stood were long ago obliterated. We have only records to tell us what went on there. Yavi was a scrawny, hairless man, scaly with skin disease. In reluctant recognition of his Archimedean status, he was permitted to wear the white robe. Now, a befouled, ragged garment. Two tattooed serpents crawled up each bony arm from elbow to wrist. Lavos, we are told, was attentive to his prisoner. He administered the prescribed soup, water, and beatings with the same punctual fidelity. These are recreations of Lavos's own snakes. No mere tattoos, but living, bioferrous exoflesh. Observers at the prison reported that Yavi was frequently whispering to Lavos. There was some concern among the wardens, but they dismissed the whispers as mere posturing. Yavi's cell walls began to fill up with scrawlings, using blood and filth as ink. At first, these were simple symbols, but as time passed, they became more elaborate. It was as if the Archimedean was turning his cell into a demonic temple, baiting his captors. There was even an image of Lavos, resplendent in his cyan banner of office. Perhaps an attempt at a curse. Lavos was ordered to beat him harder, and duly did so. With the blood on the wall, Yavi drew a snake. An appeal, no doubt, to his depraved idol. Floor washer Bekran Zaft, the sole survivor of Dabeoth Kra, would later tell of how Lavos would stride from cell to cell, weighty shotgun in hand, clubbing and beating as required. The nightmares still haunted her. The Warden's records reveal an increasing unease with Yavi's bizarre behavior. Regardless of the potential risk, they determine that he should be executed. After a fashion, they would use cellular reversal. Yavi would be reduced to a mere biological pulp with no more sentience than bread mold. But the executioner... No jailer wanted to be the pobber to bell that cavat. So Lavos received this ceremonial helm, along with the power to reconfigure organic matter. He could be their instrument. The walls, floor, and ceiling of the cell were, by now, overwritten with text. Lavos watched over Yavi continually. Bekran Zaft tells us that, curiously, Lavos no longer beat the prisoners in the other cells. Even when the inmates shoved one of their hated fellows into his path, 
expecting a, a bloody beatdown. Lavos merely waited for him to get back to his feet before moving on. What actually was this forbidden practice of transmutation that terrified the Orokin so? At its pinnacle, it was nothing less than the purposeful elevation of consciousness. To the Orokin, prisoners of their endless golden dream, the thought that a person could rise above their station was anathema. Transmutation could turn commoners into kings, or riches into garbage. Worst of all, it could teach people not to be afraid. I have seen a preserved image of Yavis Sel. His scrawlings were not demonic sigils and barbarous texts, but star charts, evolutionary trees, genome structures. Yavi was not defying Lavos with these cryptic daubings in his own blood. He was enlightening him. Not dark sorcery at all, but radiant science. And the snake? A symbol not of corruption, but of healing. Yavi was a teacher. He might have taught millions. Now, he had only one student. But that student was attentive. Bekran Zaft says this of Execution Day. The jailers gathered in the auditorium with a slow, funereal tread. Lavos escorted Yavi to the execution dais. He gently raised a hood over Yavi's head, cobra-like. He turned, then, to face the Orokin Warden, shotgun trembling in his mighty hands. The silence Zaf says, was absolute. But then, from beneath the hood, came a whisper. Yavi had some final words for his student. The Orokin Jailer shifted uncomfortably, looked to his functionaries. Would the execution even take place? Lavos gave a stiff bow to Yavi and activated his power. Yavi's skin peeled off in one grisly sloughing. He liquefied into a biological soup. A cheer went up from the assembled jailers. Lavos gathered the remains of Yavi tenderly in his hands. A soft glow emanated from them. As in one horrible moment, Yavi's Orokin oppressors realized what they beheld, and then, panic. Lavos was transmuting the remains. A twining, living snake seethed up Lavos's left arm. Yavi, transformed, and still, after a fashion, alive, just as they had feared. A second snake coiled around his right arm, this one sprouting from Lavos's own flesh. Then, Lavos leapt into the midst of the assembly, hurling vials left and right, bathing the hapless screaming jailers and functionaries and their warden in icy vitriol. Not one survived. Not for long, anyway. And Bekran Zaft? Lavos bowed to her and moved on. They say that Lavos often takes counsel from his serpents. One is his brutal advisor, the other his wise teacher. Both have their wisdom, and Yavi still whispers to his beloved student. Much like the snake, Lavos is easy to misjudge. The serpents that poison can also cure. He may have been a monster in his previous life, but he was able to achieve something that eluded the most powerful of the Orokin. He changed. Moreover, he changed himself. Yavi may have helped and instructed, but the will to change must have begun with Lavos. 
Perhaps we all have that golden gleam coiled within us somewhere, ready to slither forth from its old skin. We must only beware that we do not condemn as devilish that which we do not yet understand. <laughs>